Hello again and welcome to another edition of Shed Talk, um, my weekly uh, magazine type video series looking at the keeping of caged birds and in particular the um, keeping, breeding and showing of exhibition type uh, budgery guards. Well in this episode, as promised uh, a few episodes ago, we're going to take a review at how the um, new air purifier is um, working and see what the impact that might be having. Um, on the shed overall but before we do that let's have a quick look at the other jobs I've got for the shed in December. Well the main focus um, for December is actually right behind me and it's getting this um, old finch flight uh, sorted out. You may remember that one of the main reasons I moved the finches out of here was because I was having really real difficulty getting in there to clean it with them all being flighty and flying around and this shed, some areas of the shed being quite difficult for, to get to should any of them um, get out. So prior to moving the um, budgery gas out of the slightly smaller flight into this bigger one, um, I need to get in here and give this a real good scrub um, and clean out and disinfect and all the rest of it. So that's the main focus um, for December and then getting the budgies moved back across. Um, before we start on that though, I just thought I'd give you a very quick update on um, the rest of the videos in December and particularly the um, Christmas videos. Um, in the last episode I mentioned that um, I thought there was going to be something a little bit special uh, coming up in December that everybody would enjoy. Unfortunately, circumstances um, uh, beyond my control really, uh, and beyond anybody's control really, uh, means that we've that I'm not being going to, I'm not actually able to record that video um, uh, before the Christmas break. I'm hoping that we will have that um, episode at some stage in the new year, um, but that all depends on how other um, things go. So, uh, real shame. I, I, you know, I think everybody, well, I particularly was looking forward to that um, episode, but that is the way things go. Um, we will still have the um, bit of fun episode that I mentioned uh, and that will come up now. That will be right at the end of the, or towards the end of uh, December. That video will be released um, and I hope you'll enjoy that. It is just a bit of fun with a slightly, slightly serious nature in there as well, but mainly uh, for fun. Um, and there will be a video to replace the, or an episode to replace the episode that was missing. Um, and I'm beginning to wonder, I'm looking at that at the moment, I haven't fully decided what that's going to be. It may be a focus on a particular a particular area or a particular issue. Um, I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. As always, though, a big thank you to all of you who have subscribed to the channel, or and just generally those of you that uh, take the time to uh, watch these um, videos. Don't forget, if you do enjoy them, if you do watch them and enjoy them, then do subscribe to the channel, do hit the like button, and of course, do comment. All this will help the um, channel grow, and um, of course, promotes the bird keeping um, fancy in general. So, let's have a look then at what we've got to do in this um, finch flight. Well, the noise in the shed has really risen, um, and I'm hoping you can hear me all right over there loudness of the cockbirds talking to each other, chattering away. Um, really pleasant. I sometimes when I'm just sat at the table working I hardly ever hear it. The moment I start to record suddenly the amount of noise in the shed um, is much more noticeable. But so talking of the budgets that's the main focus um, for this month is actually the plan to move the buttery guards that are in the what was essentially the nappy flight. Um, a little half flight into what was the old um, finch flight. Um, and like I said, the finch flight, uh, one of the main reasons for moving the finches was because um, it would be proven to become increasingly more difficult to keep the finch flight clean. So I'm going to have to give this a real, real good doing over before I move the buggery guys into it. And indeed, I've already started doing that. I've taken everything out of the flight. The bits I can salvage, I'm planning to salvage. The rest of it is going into black bags uh, for the bin man. Um, the salvageable stuff at the moment is in the, um, is actually in the flight and soaking in a 50-50 um, solution of bleach and 
water you'll be aware that I don't mind I quite like using um, a concentration of bleach um, for cleaning I've never had any problems with um, this having an effect on the birds uh, and uh, so I use bleach for cleaning all of the hard type materials at the moment um, most of the plastic stuff's gone in there and the old plastic ink nesting boxes are in there all of that's in there now currently soaking away uh, once i've given that a couple of days soaking in the bleach solution it'll all get scrubbed and then thoroughly washed out i've also started a very quick start of um, cleaning and uh, disinfecting the main flight this initially what i've done is swept it all out got rid of the worst of it and then i've damped it down with a solution of um, of avian disinfectant so just damped it down a lot of the reason for this is while i'm in there cleaning it is just, just to keep the dust levels down when i'm scrubbing and um, doing the rest of the bits and pieces of cleaning and um, i do wear a mask when i'm in there as well just to make sure i'm not inhaling all of the dust and stuff so that's the first phase of, of this clean what i will then do is get some uh, again a bleach solution and scrub all again all the hard surfaces so the walls the concrete walls and the concrete floor will get scrubbed in a bleach solution get them nice and clean i will then wipe it down clean it all down again with um, just some soapy water and then the final a bit of the cleaning will be a clean with an f10 solution so giving that all of the rest of it including the floors and the sidewalls, but all of the wooden areas and the cave trunks and all that area with um, an F10 um, disinfectant. I'll then move on to a couple of areas that I need to have a look at and one of the main ones of those of course um, is the finch um, feeding area. Uh, this is fine for the finches because the finches don't chew, but if I put the budget in there they'll rip that area completely to pieces. Um, and before I know it, they'll be out and around the rest of the shed. So um, I need to do something about that. I'll probably lay a much harder wood across it, um, or maybe use the old feeding tray, um, which is a metal feeding tray. If it fits in there neatly, I might use that. Um, but we'll wait and see. So that area will need redoing completely. Um, once I've done that, I need to sort out perches for in here because uh, the perches that are in there for the finches um, aren't suitable for the budgies. So I need to sort out a, a perch in there and where that's going to be. And I plan to put one either end. The one at the end closest to the um, nappy flight will be a full length set of perches going from floor to the to the ceiling. And the one at the other end where it's a little, where it's like, it looks like a little half flight in itself will just be a half set of perches um, on that end. I'll then put some toys and stuff in there, rope strings, the plastic plastic ties that a lot of people use, that sort of stuff. Um, just something to keep the birds interested while they're in there. Once I've got all that in, what I then plan to do is give the whole area a, a mic treatment. I might give it a quick mic treatment here with a mic solution, treatment solution, before I fit the perches, but I'll certainly do it again once the perches are in there. With the finches having been in there and have it not been cleaned out, I'm a bit worried about that there might be mite, uh, a mite treatment in there. And once I've done that, given it a full treatment of anti-mite um, stuff, um, my, uh, my intention then is for the whole bird room to be fogged um, with a, um, yeah, a smoke bomb, anti-mite treatment smoke bomb. Um, and I'm going to talk a bit more about that in the next video or in a future video, video coming up um, about how I'm planning to use it. I've never used it before. I've been online and watched a couple of people use them, so I'm reasonably confident um, of how to use them. But, you know, that it'll be for a future video watching me attempting to do that. So that will be the main focus for um, December. I'm hoping I can get all of that done, completed. Um, before the end of December and get these birds moved across into here um, before Christmas. But we'll have to wait and see whether that's going to be possible, won't we? So I suppose it's time to have a look at the um, air purifier and see how this has been doing in terms of um, reducing some of the dust and uh, stuff that's in the 
generally in the shed. Um, you may remember I did a video, or I got this um, uh, about, about three weeks ago now, it's been running for, um, and I did a video of me opening it up and talking about why I got it, and it was really because of the number of um, budgery guards I've now got in the shed, having moved them from the outside for like where the finches are now, into here. Um, the small extractor fan that I've got wasn't doing the job of keeping the dust down. Um, like I say, I did a video of me getting out and talking a bit about the actual air purifier um, about two weeks or two episodes ago. If you haven't seen that, I will put a link now across the top of the screen um, so you can go and have a look at that video if you would like. Um, so what do I think of it in terms of how it's been working and in terms of, uh, I suppose, really that goal of trying to keep the dust down? Um, my first impressions are that having had it running for um, uh, 12 hours a day for the last, you know, almost three weeks, is that there has been a general reduction in the amount of dust in the shed. Not got rid of it at all, uh, completely, um, but there's been a reduction. So there is still some dust gathering on some of the surfaces, but it's nowhere near as much um, as it was before I put the um, purifier um, into the shed. So my initial thoughts is that it's doing some good in terms of that redu reduction in the amount of um, dust. The other thing I'd say is, and again I don't know whether this is just in my head or whether there are other factors involved here, um, I've noticed that the level of noise in the shed has increased, particularly in the last sort of week and a week and a bit, um, and I'm not sure whether that's down to the general air quality improving and the birds therefore feeling um, a little bit happier about the uh, in themselves and that's generally just increasing um, the level of activity in the shed of course it might just be that we're moving into that time of the year where you know the budgets are starting to come but much more into condition and therefore the level of noise just rises anyway so um, but it might be linked to the to the um, air purifier I don't know so that's my first impressions of how uh, this has gone I suppose the thing to do now is to open it up uh, and have a look at the filter and see the sort of level of dust that it's collected in the filter um, that would otherwise have been either generally in the room, in my lungs or in the bird's lungs. So I've turned it off um, and turned it around so we've got access to the opening at the back. A grand unveiling then, let's see what this um, filter looks like. Well, it certainly looks like it's got a fair old bit of dust in here, as we can see. Um, what I think I will do now is give this a hoover. Well, I think you can see, let's just see if I can zoom in a little bit. So if I pull this away, you can see what it looks like and the amount of dust. So let's give this filter another a little hoover out and then let it go again I think it's definitely working what do you think so I've given it a hoover out as you can probably see from this um, update of it uh, and I hope you can see the difference that that's made just giving it a quick hoover um, I'll try and do a side-by-side -side shot so you get a better view of what it was like before I hoovered it and now I have hoovered it. All I'll do now is put the um, back back on it and um, restart it and let it go for another 12 hours. Definitely making a difference. Definitely making a difference, I would say, in terms of the amount of dust this is capturing that would otherwise be in the air. So I think um, a good investment for the shed. So that's where in the shed um, it for January. The main focus, um, apart from the um, old finch flight, in terms of the breeding cages for the budgery guys, is now really getting into that everyday um, routine of, you know, checking boxes, checking the eggs, numbering the eggs, updating the record cards, all that sort of stuff. Keeping an eye on the pairs, making sure those 
that there's no um, squabbling going on and those pairs that aren't settled into the breeding um, routine just yet seeing how they get on and then if necessary thinking about um, swapping those particular pairs out so that really really now this uh, behind me the breeding cages is just a working um, breeding shed now um, for the um, outside shed the finch and I suppose finch and canary shed we ought to call it now um, for the finch and canary shed um, really it's just making sure that um, with this being the first time really they've been in that outside um, or in the other shed um, making sure that they successfully get through the winter period um, I do have heating out there um, in here so in the um, breeding bird room for the budgery guards the heating in here is set to around about 16 so it does stay reasonably warm in here um, I like to keep it a minimum of 16 for the um, breeding budgets outside in the shed outside the um, thermostat is set to 12 I've got two heaters out there one is an oil type heater one is one of those uh, tubular um, electric heaters um, I set, like I say I set the temperature in there to about 12 or to 12 degrees um, and I reckon looking at I've got two different um, temperature gauges in the shed and both of those never drop the minimum it drops to is about 10 so I'm guessing everywhere in the bird room it never gets drops below 10 and they seem fine uh, with that I suppose my only concern really is I don't want to put the temperature any higher because um, if I do raise the temperature I'm a bit worried that the canaries might go into a malt um, if the um, temperature um, goes up uh, so that's my concern so I need so I'm keeping the temperature at 12 um, and I'm hoping that's fine for um, the finches like I say at the moment they don't seem to be suffering they seem actually much happier out there than they were in the old flight um, the canaries set, like I say they've settled in re really really well um, I have noticed so the cockbirds done a little bit of singing not massively but a little bit of singing um, and I have noticed that the cockbird uh, and the hen are beaking so it looks like the cockbird is getting ready to feed the hen really early considering that it's the beginning of December um, or at least I would have thought that's really early um, you can hear if there's any canary people out there watching this let me know um, the hen has also um, been pulling at little bits of threads that are in and around the flight cage so I'm, um, or in around the main flight so um, nothing serious I'm hoping I may have to give um, the um, Bob Honey the guy I got the um, the canaries off of or one of the guys I got canaries off as a quick call and just make sure I'm not doing anything desperately wrong there but there we go that's the um, outside flight and that's the rest of the jobs uh, for December um, that's just about all we've got time for in um, this video um, I hope you enjoyed it if you did as always you know do hit the like button subscribe to the channel share it hit the bell all the rest of that stuff um, but until the next video please as always do stay safe and enjoy your birds.